Welcome to this episode of MoGuard TV. I'm Senior Airman Bruce Jenkins with the Missouri Air National Guard. In this episode, we'll see the opening of the Family Resiliency Center, hear from Katie Steele Danner, learn about a program that works with guardsmen and their civilian employers, and profile the top enlisted airmen in the Missouri Air National Guard. We'll also hear about the visit of a VIP to the Ike Skelton training site. For this first story, we cover the ribbon cutting ceremony for the Family Resiliency Center at the Ike Skelton Training Site in Jefferson City. The Missouri National Guard's Family Resiliency Center has opened its doors at the Ike Skelton Training Site in Jefferson City. Through this place, may service members and their supporters find the skills needed to meet and overcome any challenge they face. Through this resiliency center, may not only the Missouri National Guard be strengthened, but may both families and communities be blessed throughout the great state of Missouri. Today is a banner day as we mark the culmination of a project that reflects our organization's commitment to the well-being of soldiers and airmen, their family members, and our veteran community. Resilience is our inner fortitude and strength to face life's challenges and to learn how to grow through adversity. Thus, a resiliency center is a place for us to take care of the soldier, or as I say it from my boots, S-O-U-L-D-I-E-R, a soldier. This wouldn't be possible or even happen if it wasn't for the vision of General Banner. And uh, those of you who know him, that's just one of his 100,000 visions he has a day. <laughs> <laughs> Shortly after Major General Steve Danner became the Adjutant General of Missouri, he had the vision to build a venue where the Missouri National Guard could hold their own events and began the process of finding the funds for the project. Over these last 14 years of war, 14 of our own guardsmen have perished on active duty, seven killed in action. It was tough for me to do what I thought proper memorial services out on a drill floor or in our auditorium. Unfortunately, because of budget constraints and other issues, state or federal money wasn't available, so a group of us gathered one evening and we just decided we would form the Missouri National Guard Foundation and we would raise the money from private sources. Formed in 2010, the Missouri National Guard Foundation a 501c3 not-for-profit corporation seeks to further enhance support services for Missouri National Guard members and their families. That there are many people across the state that believe in the goals and the mission of the National Guard as evidenced by the support. Individual donations of five or ten dollars, hundreds of people wrote checks and we had a large number of corporate supporters that stepped forward to help us to fill that fundraising goal. And we very much appreciate their support. They got us over the hump to do this. But when I look at the outside of the building, I'm reminded that it's not so much what's on the outside here, but about all the caring and healing that will take place inside these walls. They want to pay back for the freedoms that they have and they want to help the soldiers out for what they've done for their freedoms. At Ameren, we realize that supporting projects like the Missouri National Guard Resiliency Center, it's not just the right thing to do, it's our duty to give back to those who serve. We are very grateful for that commitment to the National Guard. We figured out how the community can come alongside the Missouri National Guard and create things that the government cannot or will not do. The pathway might be the greatest thing that we've learned. The center will be utilized as a venue for weddings and military ceremonies, but also serve as a space for spiritual well-being, counseling, and behavioral health care. Health in all its dimensions is a precursor to readiness. If we're not healthy and we're not strong, we're just not ready. Families struggle when they come home and people have changed. If we can step in and keep families together, that's great. 
We purposefully didn't want to identify it too closely with any religious affiliation. But it's also a place for people to come together to celebrate and to worship. We can come and we can learn and we can grow and we can come and reflect and just draw strength from the beauty of nature. And I think with a strong heart, then we go back down this hill and out into the world to do our mission. It turned out beautiful. It's got a great view and it's a good place to come and reflect and revitalize yourself and become whole again. The center will be the new home for many of the offices from the Missouri National Guard's Enhanced Resiliency Program. Now we can actually begin the work of mental health and counseling services and other services to our soldiers, airmen, and their families. Personally, I was just very proud to see my husband's dream come to fruition. It took some time over the last five years, but that's part of being in the Guard. Always ready, always there. In this next story, we'll hear from Katie Steele Danner, wife of the Adjutant General and chairperson of the Missouri National Guard's Family Advisory Council. The service commitments of Missouri National Guardsmen can pose unique challenges to their family members. Anytime that soldier or airman is gone, that family has the burden of picking up uh, that individual's responsibilities. Now, having personally uh, been deployed, I know that if they're having problems at home and having to think of family members and difficulty, their mind's not in the game. So taking care of families is an integral part of everything that we do and is a very important part of our strategic plan here in the Missouri National Guard. One of the resources that families have working for them is the Family Advisory Council. The council is chaired by the Adjutant General's wife, Katie Steele Danner one of the Missouri National Guard's greatest advocates. What the Family Advisory Council does is bring together the professional staff and the volunteer staff from across the state to strategize, prioritize, brainstorm, and come up with workable solutions. We're able to look at some best practices. What are some other programs that are happening in other states that we could potentially replicate in Missouri? One of these programs created a support structure for guardsmen and their families utilizing partnerships with faith-based organizations. The Adjutant General saw that and visited with his chaplaincy corps and said, this is a project that I think that Missourians will embrace. So the Partners in Care program rolled out across the state. As more people became aware of it, they raised their hand and say, we absolutely have resources to bring to bear and we want to be a partner in this program. The success of the Partners in Care program put the Missouri National Guard on the radar of some very important ladies, First Lady Michelle Obama and Second Lady Dr. Jill Biden. Their organization, called Joining Forces, had learned about the success of the Missouri National Guard's Partners in Care program. We were able to host Dr. Biden at Park College along the Missouri River in the greater Kansas City area. And we were able to bring some families together that were able to share with her some of the success stories from the Partners in Care program, how they had been able to reach out to the National Guard and the National Guard chaplaincy in return had been able to find some resources to help them with their individual crisis. I think it's important for people to understand that at one of the highest levels of government, we have a real champion in Michelle Obama and Dr. Jill Biden. During the visit, Dr. Biden gave Katie a signed copy of her children's book, Don't Forget, God Bless Our Troops. She is an educator, and one of the ways that she felt that she could help the 99% of other Americans that aren't involved serving in uniform is to talk to the children. It also is a learning tool for children to be able to talk about their anxieties when they're separated because of training, uh, because of any deployment, and frankly, some of the anxieties about reunification. One of the Guard's own champions, Zachary Parsons, the teenage son of a Missouri National Guardsman and a member of the Guard's Teen Advisory Council, has been busy sharing his own experience 
of his father's deployment and medical recovery. So Zachary was able to share with the Teen Advisory Council and to go across the state and share what that meant, what the challenges were, how he had to step into a leadership role in his family. And we were very honored that his work, his leadership, his dedication, devotion, and frankly, his commitment to the National Guard was recognized when he was selected as the Outstanding Military Child of the Year. Volunteers are key to the success of the Missouri National Guard's family programs. Any individual activity that you'd like to donate your time, your talents, your skill to the National Guard will find a way to make good use of it. Coming up after the break, we'll learn about a program that supports guardsmen and the relationship they have with their civilian employers. James Schreffler is an assistant professor of military science at the College of the Ozarks in Point Lookout, Missouri. He brings a unique perspective to the position as a lieutenant colonel in the Missouri National Guard, as well as an Apache helicopter pilot. For many M-Day or traditional guardsmen like Colonel Schreffler, the commitment of monthly and annual training, as well as overseas deployments, can conflict with the commitment of a full-time job. One entity that works to promote support of citizen soldiers is the ESGR, which stands for Employer Support of the Guard and Reserve. ESGR is a Department of Defense office that promotes cooperation between reserve component service members and their civilian employers. Lee Metcalf is the chair for the Missouri ESGR board. Our responsibility is to assist Guard and Reserve in the state of Missouri on just about any issue they're encountering having to do with employment. The Missouri ESGR board was asked to review a packet on Lieutenant Colonel Schreffler's employer, the College of the Ozarks. This was not because there was a conflict to resolve, but because Colonel Schreffler was nominating them for a national level award. Since joining the faculty 11 years ago, Colonel Schreffler has missed a significant amount of work due to multiple overseas deployments, Missouri National Guard training, and specialized Army helicopter training. The college has gone above and beyond in supporting him and his family, and he wanted to honor them by nominating them for the Secretary of Defense Employer Support Freedom Award. The college has been 100% supportive of anything that I've had to do militarily-wise. It's outstanding to know that you have that support behind you. Well, I've never met an organization that has been so patriotic and supportive of the military in my life. When our board looked at the kinds of things that they were doing, it was just obvious that this was an organization that was a role model for how educational institutions might want to approach treating their employees in general, but specifically Guard, Reserve, and Veterans. They've paid my salary and benefits through multiple deployments and long uh, absences for training. The community support of the college family from my family while I've been gone, sending cards, constant communication with my family, checking up on them, making sure that everything is going okay while I'm out of the country, coming over and helping out with things at the house, uh, it's just a tremendous community and support for the military members. The College of the Ozarks has a long-standing tradition of hiring and honoring veterans and military service members. President Jerry Davis sees this as an expression of the school's patriotism. The college itself has patriotism as one of its five goals, so we certainly ought to be setting a good example on how to treat those in the military, and especially those in the Guard and Reserve when they're called up. The high level of patriotism did not go unnoticed by the Missouri ESGR board as they submitted the nomination for national review. Once we got that nomination for what they had done for him, we discovered a whole range of other benefits that they offer to veterans, guard, and reservists as employees of their organization, but also as students. They have an amazing program where it's a work program that opens the door for folks to be able to get through and get a degree in a way that's just so unique. From over 3,000 nominations nationwide, the college was selected as one of 15 recipients of the 2015 Freedom Award. The award was presented to President Jerry Davis on August 21, 2015 at the Pentagon. 
Mr. Davis sees this award as confirmation of the school accomplishing one of its primary educational missions. It's a public affirmation that the college is doing a good job of informing young people of the sacrifices that the military makes on their behalf. We try to educate students so that they know something about the history of the country and not take their privileges for granted and that they recognize those who defend them every day. I'd just like to, to thank them formally. It's the least I can do. Uh, they're well deserving of this award. Uh, their support is, is next to none. It's outstanding knowing that they have my back. We hear stories about employers that may not be that supportive or worried about hiring someone in the military or the reserves because of that other commitment. It's actually looked favorably upon at the College of the Ozarks and it's comforting to know that they have my back and that, they're, that my position is gonna be there, that they're endorsing my absence for uh, serving the country and that they're, they're behind it 100% and helping my family at the same time. It's just, it's just tremendous. Coming up after the break, we'll meet the top enlisted airman in the Missouri National Guard and hear about his new advisory role. For over 375 years, our nation's citizen soldiers have sacrificed, struggled, and triumphed at home and abroad. Through resolve, resilience, and readiness, our Army National Guard continues its proud legacy. As citizen soldiers, we are your next door neighbors. We're your colleagues in school offices and factories in every corner of America. The Army National Guard is nearby. The Army National Guard. Chief Master Sergeant Joe Sluter was recently appointed by Major General Steve Danner as the new State Command Chief for the Missouri Air National Guard. Chief Sluter oversees the development of the roughly 2,400 airmen in the state. I'm in charge of the climate, kind of the welfare of all of the airmen, and we call that kind of big A in the Air National Guard, meaning the officers, the enlisted, the civilians, and the contractors, and then more specifically, the mentorship and the development of the enlisted force from an up and out perspective for where we're gonna be and how ready we need to be 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Chief Sluter has an office at Ike Skelton Training Site in Jefferson City, but he often travels out to the 131st Bomb Wing at Whiteman Air Force Base in Nob Noster and the 139th Airlift Wing at Rosecrans Air National Guard Base in St. Joseph to get some face time with the airmen. We care about what they're doing and committed to them and their families. The best and most humbling part of the job is being able to go in out, shake hands, hear the story from the airmen about what they do, how their family are doing, as well as just saying thank you to them uh, from time to time, providing or award them a coin, and just seeing what I can do to help them. Originally from Mississippi, Chief Sluter's military career spans 28 years. It includes 12 years of active duty service in the Air Force. He was most recently with the Joint Task Force North at Fort Bliss in El Paso, Texas, working on counter drug missions. Chief Sluter says that he values a good first impression and that is something that he is aware of as a new face in the Missouri National Guard leadership. For me, the biggest thing they want to see is just that I'm genuine, that I speak from the heart and that somebody cares about it. That's really what I try to do. I spend quite a bit of time on the road. The biggest influence on Chief Sluter's choice to pursue a military career was his father. My father retired from the uh, active duty Air Force after doing about 24 years at a Greenville Air Force base there in Mississippi. So he worked on the flight line with aircraft as a crew chief. So that was a, a huge impact. I wanted to follow in his footsteps in the Air Force and then did so. And it's been an outstanding career. I honor his service every day. And that's another reason I brought the flag in I have in my office. It reminds me every day of that commitment and gives me that little pep, that little piece of that energy whenever I'm down to keep pushing and do the job the way I need to do it. MoGuard TV was there as the senior enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff visited the Ike Skelton training site. Good morning, everybody. Marine Corps Sergeant Major Brian Battaglia, the senior enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, recently took a tour through military installations across the Midwest. 
stopping in Missouri to meet with enlisted guardsmen. His first stop was Ike Skelton Training Site, headquarters of the Missouri National Guard. He met with senior enlisted leaders, then hosted a town hall meeting in an effort to gauge issues that service members may be dealing with, as well as offer counsel and guidance to issues facing junior enlisted guardsmen moving forward in their careers. It's always good to hear the perspective from the number one non-commissioned officer in the entire Department of Defense. Got great feedback from that. It was an honor for him to be here. I want to thank Sergeant Major Battaglia for, for taking the time to come to Missouri uh, and being so inclusive that he brought Army, Air, Guard, and, and Active, and even Reserve all in the same vehicle at the same time, moving throughout the training sites to establish a relationship that I think will carry on well past my retirement. After his visit at Ike Skelton training site, Sergeant Major Battaglia flew to Whiteman Air Force Base to meet with Air Guardsmen of the 131st Bomb Wing and the 139th Airlift Wing. While at Whiteman, Sergeant Major Battaglia held a similar town hall meeting and observed Whiteman's total force integration, where Air National Guardsmen and active duty personnel come together to work and train on the maintenance and repair of the B-2 bomber. So he came out to see the Air National Guard and the Army National Guard of Missouri. He also wanted to see the active duty installations and really check and see that the families and the airmen and the soldiers were being taken care of. That was his overall objective. Be able to take him out and actually meet from the E3s, the E4s and E5s out there to see the actual SEAC, uh, to be able to brief them on the mission they actually do and to be coined by him just makes their day and sometimes it makes their career. It shows, especially our lowest airmen that we met, is that the highest ranking enlisted member of the armed forces truly cares. Wrapping up his visit at Whiteman Air Force Base, Sergeant Major Battaglia traveled first to Fort Leonard Wood, where he met with active duty personnel, then to Springfield, Missouri, where he spent time with guardsmen of the 1107th Theater Aviation Group, observing the importance of aviation assets to not only the state of Missouri, but to the entire Midwest region as a whole. Every stop that I've made through a command visit, there's been some sort of interaction with, uh, with the National Guard, both air and Army side. What was impressive about the Missouri National Guard is their consistent rating with readiness. Holding second in, in the nation is no easy feat. You really got to have an operational focus to be trained, educated, molded, developed, poised, postured to deploy in quick form. That could be something of a natural disaster within the continental United States or OCONUS and do the nation's bidding in far off lands. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, my visit here. I wish it could have been longer. I'll certainly be taking some great takeaways to the chairman and other leaders in D.C. that um, Missouri National Guard, General Danner's team, Command Sergeant Major and the Chief's team really have it together. From Missouri, Sergeant Major Battaglia will continue his tour of other states before returning to his post in Washington, D.C. Reporting for the Missouri National Guard, I'm Army Sergeant Alex Flynn. It is now my honor to introduce the commander of the Missouri National Guard, the Adjutant General, Major General Steve Danner. Thank you, Senior Airman Jenkins, and thank you, viewers, for watching this episode of MoGuard TV. As we meet our state and federal mission, our family and warrior support programs continue to strengthen our guardsmen and their families. In this episode, we saw the ribbon-cutting ceremony of the Family Resiliency Center at the Ike Skelton Training Site. The Resiliency Center will be an incredible asset to our soldiers, airmen, and families for generations to come. We also heard from my wife, Katie Steele Danner, as she described her passion for helping guardsmen and their families as chairperson of the Family Advisory Council. Katie, like so many guard spouses and supporters, is a critical part of our organization. We learned about the employer support of the Guard and Reserve program and how it helps to both empower guardsmen and support civilian employers. Finally, we saw the crucial role of enlisted leaders in Missouri and nationally. We profiled State Command Chief Master Sergeant Joe Sluter as he helps champion a culture of readiness in his new advisory role. We also heard from a distinguished visitor, Sergeant Major Brian Battaglia, the senior enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The Missouri National Guard is a proud, strong organization today because of its military members and the civilians who support it. 
on behalf of Governor Jay Nixon and our nearly 12,000 soldiers and airmen, thank you for your support.